One day they're on top of the world. The next, poof. There's nothing like a scandal to end a successful career in the public eye. Nobody's, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, and I certainly wouldn't. And, and I understand it. I'm not going to argue with it. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 career finishing scandals. For this list, we're including various types of performers, politicians, athletes, and other individuals in the spotlight who've seen their careers derailed by actions or events deemed morally or legally wrong. Do you guys want me to finish my answer? That'd be reasonable. You do the questions, I do the answers, and this jackass interrupts me. How about that as the, as the new rule of the game? However, we're excluding scandals centering on lengthy trials, such as those of O.J. Simpson or Bernie Madoff. How oh, we want Mr. Madoff to go to jail? Number 10. Winona Ryder, shoplifting. A-list performers not only make tons of money, they're often given expensive gifts from clothing and jewelry designers who then get free publicity when stars wear their creations. So it seemed unlikely that such a celebrity would steal these kinds of items from a department store. Oh, it wasn't my due. You know I didn't want to do it. But you did do it. This was apparently not the case for Ryder, though, who was arrested on shoplifting charges at the turn of the century and convicted of three felonies. Seemingly unstoppable during the 90s, post-arrest, the award-winning actress was practically scrubbed from the trailer for Mr. Deeds, her 2002 film with Adam Sandler. Ooh, there he is. How's I being mugged? Good luck. See you at the office. Don't worry, I'll get him. And her career has been in the slow lane ever since. Is that your long-term plan to work in retail? Number 9. Paula Deen, Racist Language Paula Deen was alleged to have said the N-word multiple times. For years, Paula Deen was the undisputed queen of down-home Southern cooking. Ignoring prevailing health trends that cautioned against the overuse of butter, sugar, cream, and deep fryers. And I offer my sincere apology to those that I have hurt, and I hope that you forgive me. Unfortunately, Dean's tendency to go against political correctness extended beyond the kitchen. A former employee claimed in a lawsuit that Dean had used racial slurs off camera. According to the deposition, Dean was asked, have you ever used the N-word yourself? To which she replies, yes, of course. When Dean admitted that she had used the N-word in the past and offered a tearful apology, she lost her popular Food Network TV show and the support of several sponsors. But it's too late. Because the Food Network turned around and said, hey, you know what, Paula, you're terminated. Currently, she's attempting a comeback with her own network. Well, welcome to the Paula Dean Network. You can throw out your TV now, because this is where you can find me. Number eight, Millie Vanilli, lip syncing. Girl, you know it's true. Uh. In the era of auto-tune and pre-recorded tracks for live performances, it could almost be argued that Fab Morvan and Rob Pilatus were just ahead of the curve. But even though many pop stars benefit from the technological enhancement of their own voices, the voices of this late 80s duo belonged to session singers. I'm just in love, girl. And this is true. You know it's true. When it finally came to light that Morvan and Pilatus could barely speak English, let alone sing in that language, and that other singers had done the vocals on their album, the deception destroyed what once seemed a very promising career. The men were also stripped of their Grammy Award. The pair was returning the Grammy Awards they won for the Best New Artist of 1989, but the Recording Academy had already stripped them of the trophies the day before. Although Morvan eventually achieved moderate success as a musician, Pilatus succumbed to drugs in 1998. Being punched every day in the public eye leaves marks. Number seven, Michael Richards, racist rant. Hello, I'm Kramer. Nice to meet you. See you later. <laughs> as Cosmo Kramer on Seinfeld, Richards seemed goofy and lovable. And for many fans, it was impossible not to associate the actor with the loopy but harmless character. Here, take one. I don't want one. No, they're good. Take one. I don't want any. Just take one. No, stop. Kramer, stop it. 
That all changed in 2006 during a comedy club show when Richards lashed out at hecklers in the audience. Shut up! 50 years ago you had your own tied down with a fucking pork up your ass! <laughs> While calling them out for their rudeness and loudness was understandable, other comedians have similarly challenged audience members. The situation took an unexpected and career-ending turn when Richards unleashed a barrage of racial slurs. Rolls out, he's a nigger. He's a nigger. He's a nigger. Oh my God. A nigger look is a nigger. Though he attempted to publicly apologize, Richards officially retired from performing stand-up comedy in 2007. Every time I see this backdrop, I think about. Kramer f up. <laughs> Number six, the Dixie Chicks, George W. Bush diss. The landslide will bring you down. It was the diss heard round the world. When band member Natalie Maines announced during a London show that the group was ashamed of being from the same state as then President George W. Bush, the Brits cheered. Just so you know, we're ashamed the President of the United States is from Texas. But once the comment was reported in the media, many American fans seethed. Some country music radio stations banned the chick's music, and Maines even received death threats. And I didn't know that kind of hatred existed, and it was weird to see it be taught to someone. Boycotts caused the group's music to plummet in the charts and hurt their sales. Eventually, though, the fervor died down enough for the group to win multiple Grammy Awards in 2007. Our core fans have always stayed true to us, and I want to thank them for, um, for staying with us. Number five, Anthony Weiner, Sexting. Anthony Weiner's penis. <laughs> yes, I, I kept that in as long as I could. It's normally a positive thing when a politician shows openness regarding modern technology and new methods of communication, such as social media. For me, it just comes down to this, which is, what is wrong with you? However, in the case of this former member of the U.S. House of Representatives, there is such a thing as being too comfortable. This is the picture that started the controversy, tweeted from the account of one of Congress's brightest Democratic stars and directed to the Twitter name of this 21-year-old college student. Wiener lived up to his name by demonstrating a tendency to overshare photos of his own attributes with women other than his wife via Twitter. So today I'm announcing my resignation from Congress. Yeah! The sexting scandal caused him to resign from Congress in 2011 However, in 2013, he was allegedly at it again as similar antics killed his mayoral ambitions. I want to again say how very sorry I am to anyone who has received the receiving end of these messages and the disruption that this has caused. Number four, Pete Rose, gambling. Pete Rose hurled into Ray Fossey, who is slow in getting up. In 20 plus years as a baseball player, Pete Rose was exceptional. Winning multiple World Series championships, numerous awards, including Most Valuable Player, and breaking several major league records, most notably Ty Cobb's hit record. Kicks and he fires, Rose Wayne. There it is, there it is, get out, get out, all right. Hit number 41, 92. After retiring from playing, Rose became a manager. His outstanding career guaranteed induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame until evidence surfaced that he'd been betting on baseball games during his stint managing the Cincinnati Reds. Baseball Commissioner Bart Giamatti in New York ended six months of swirling questions and banished Pete Rose permanently from baseball. As a result, Rose was declared permanently ineligible for the Hall of Fame. You're 73 years old, you have a full-time hey, job. Hey, if I don't look at it, I don't act it, and I have a lot of bills. I mean, you have to work. Hey, fortunately or unfortunately, I'd rather be working in baseball. Number three, Herman Cain, sexual harassment and adultery. Cain has not talked about the latest accusation, but he did say earlier this week that even if more women came forward, they were all making their stories up. In a crowded field of Republicans seeking their party's nomination for the 2012 U.S. presidential elections, Cain stood out for several reasons. Unfortunately, many of the reasons weren't good. I know you dismissed the idea of a sexual relationship with her. Uh, yes. But nevertheless, you, you, you did give her money over the years, and that raised questions, a basic one, why? First, there was an advertisement featuring Kane's chief of staff, Mark Block, 
who apparently got so excited talking about the campaign that he couldn't finish the commercial without a smoke break. From there, things went further downhill as the aspiring presidential contender was accused of sexual harassment and adultery. This eventually led to his withdrawal from the race and politics. So you agreed with President Obama on Libya or not? Okay, Libya. Number two, Bill Cosby, sexual assault allegations. Listen, let's put on some music around here. Like one, two. Uh, <laughs> the Cosby Show brought him into millions of living rooms as perfect dad Cliff Huxtable. Long before the popular sitcom debuted, Cosby was building his reputation as a family-friendly entertainer. It's Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. Playing a trainer on an early TV series and creating the Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids cartoon. This is affecting me in my house. It's affecting me. <laughs> And it has really affected these women. So, when accusations that he'd previously drugged and sexually assaulted dozens of women started surfacing in 2014, the fallout caused Cosby to cancel some live appearances, and his fatherly reputation is probably irreparably damaged. The old story was if you took a little pin. drop, no, it was on the head of a pin. pin. That's right. Drop and you put it, it in, in a Coca Cola. Drink. Don't matter. It doesn't make it. And the girl would drink it. And, and she's yours. Hello, America. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. The, the, first of all, I'm past libel. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, there's this, there's this whole thing in America where, like, you're libel proof right. because you've had so much crap said about you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally awful. Do I? Am I an addict? No. When have you? Have I tried it? Thing? Um, probably in one of my drunken stupors, probably approximately about a year ago. And the indecent exposure part of it? I maintained at the time it happened that it didn't happen, and I maintain that still. Washington, who played Dr. Preston Burke on the ABC Hospital drama, was fired from the show for using homophobic slurs towards his castmate, T.R. Knight. No, I did not call T.R. a f Oh, you sure are a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think I'm crazy? Yeah. yeah. How are you calling me crazy? crazy? You think yeah. I'm crazy? Yeah. Number one, Mel Gibson, anti-Semitic and racist rants. What would you do if you were stuck in one place and every day was exactly the same and nothing that you did mattered? In the classic 1993 comedy Groundhog Day, the main character lives the same day over and over and over again. Unfortunately, when it comes to actor Mel Gibson and reports of his anti-Semitic vitriol. Every single day I wake up and I think of a reason not to do it every single day. It sometimes feels like the public has been experiencing their own version of Groundhog Day for the past several years. But it's the reported threats against Oksana Grigorieva that are bringing the most attention. Esther House in a letter says Gibson told him, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to have her killed. Previously known for his acting talent, leading man good looks, and ability to sell movie tickets, the American-born Australian actor's career has increasingly been overshadowed by incidents highlighting his temper and his vicious, frequently alcohol-fueled verbal outbursts and anti-Semitic rants. Uh, Edge of Darkness opens uh, today. It's good to see you back in the saddle and uh, doing what you do best. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye-bye. Asshole. Do you agree with our list? That's the <laughs> dumbest thing I ever heard. What career finishing scandal do you think is the most memorable? I don't have to ask anybody. Now go on in and change your pants. For more fascinating top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You know, Anthony Weiner said yesterday he wants closure. You want closure? Start with your zipper. Close your zipper and start with that.